All right, welcome back. So we were talking about uh, telescopes that you made from the Carolina Biological Kit just a minute ago from Galileo and uh, Kepler. Now we're gonna go to uh, what the students would consider probably more real uh, telescopes. The first one um, is uh, much smaller, um, but actually uh, really useful and a uh, powerful tool for the kids that you can use on a regular basis. And it's called the Eclipse Smart Telescope. And it comes in a handy little backpack, um, little carrying case, and a couple things that are going on about it. You've got a tripod. A tripod's really just, I need to give it something stable, right, so it can uh, not be moving around. You can't do this as a handheld device, essentially, so you need a stable platform. And the tripod's got different, you know, leg extensions you can use, and they all open up and then you can extend out. This is a really cheap tripod. It will not do a great job if you're not careful. Uh, it's lightweight, uh, it's made to kind of sit it still. Um, the students need to be careful around it. You can easily bend or break it, so just be gentle with it. Then you have the telescope itself, um, and at the end of the telescope you have an eyepiece. In this case, you have a, a mirror here that is going to reflect the light uh, and uh, to your eye. And by the way, as it reflects light, it's going to be flipping the light over so that you are now no longer going to see things upside down. Um, then you have the um, telescope, and on the front of the telescope you have the lens cap, and then you have a, a very dark uh, screen lens. So let's be careful about when we talk about this. This is a telescope designed to be used during the eclipse that we had here in South Carolina a couple years ago. Um, so they mass produce these, and this is really good. It is a sun-safe telescope, so you can use this telescope without any added filters or any added precautions and you can look right at the sun to be able to see sunspots on them or just to see the sun itself. Even if it's a cloudy day outside, as long as the sun's out, you'll be able to see it. You will not be able to see anything else through this lens. It is so well uh, masked, essentially, that it would be, everything else would be completely black. Um, and unlike a regular telescope, you don't put your eye up to it and then kind of move things around and try to find the sun. That's not going to work for you because you have no reference points up there. It's all going to be black until you actually see the sun. So I'll show you how to use it in a second. In any case, um, students can look through this at the sun. They do not need extra goggles on or anything else. Um, there's no extra filters that go on top on either side of this. This is the only telescope that they can ever look at the sun with um, this way unless they want to buy very expensive telescopes or go to a professional planetarium so they'll have the right filters and whatnot. Um, they should never look at a, the sun through a telescope um, uh, unless it's perfectly designed like this one is for us. So uh, this screws onto your, uh, what's called the head of your tripod. And it's got a couple different movements here so that you can adjust it as you need it. Now, the weird thing about this telescope, I'll bring it up to you so you can see is that to spot with it, to see where the sun is, you need to use this thing up in the front. I'll walk up to you so you can see it. You see a little target right here, and then in front of that target is a little uh, dot. It's kind of like a sundial, and essentially what's gonna happen is you will be looking this way. Don't look at the sun while you do this. Bad idea. Look at this. This is gonna be tilted up towards the sun, and they'll be casting a shadow. The sun will cast a shadow from this dot, and as soon as it hits this little center point in the bullseye, you're in the right spot, okay? So you look down, you see the shadow, you're like, oh, good, and then you look through here, and then you will be able to see the sun, okay? So don't look at the sun, you know, don't go like, oh, uh, there it is. I mean, you know, you can glance at the sun for a couple seconds and you're not gonna die. But the kids need to use this, the sun's gonna come down, it's gonna cast a shadow on this part, then they know they're in the right spot. And then, of course, you still need to use the focusing tool to move the, the lens, you know, just like they did with the magnifying glasses, closer in front to be able to be able to focus in on it. And they will be able to see sunspots on it. It's a small picture of the sun, probably the size of a marble when you look through here, but it's very crisp. And so you'll be able to actually see the spots in the sun. So it's a really cool thing to do. So again, sunny day or cloudy day, you'll still be able to see it um, in um, pretty good resolution. Um, so this is our sun telescope. Now, the next one is much larger. The kids will think it's cool. Okay, this is called the Celestron 
Astro Master 70 EQ. Um, and we got this telescope for a variety of reasons. It's a refraction telescope. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is a little bit easier to use for the students and for you. Um, and in most cases, the reason they're going to use it this way is because uh, it's easy to use during the day. Because most likely, you will not have a chance to use this at night with your kids. So when you're done, it looks like this. So this is like the cooking show. We're like, oh, and here it is after I bake it for now. Um, and I'm going to take it apart here. I'm going to show you how to build it step by step because it's kind of complicated. So bear with me. And then I'm going to show you on here where it is and how things work. To start with, realistically, you're going to be using this during the day. You're going to be using it at during the day to look at objects, uh, maybe across a field, across the courtyard, or whatever, to show your kids magnification so they can see, oh, that is really close. That's a great magnification. It's much closer than I would normally think. Um, and so they can think about how I can better see the stars with this. You can also use this, I, I have used this same telescope to see uh, Jupiter, which is a little, little bright little speck, and it's uh, some of its moons, Galilean moons, uh, and I've actually seen the rings of Saturn with this telescope, okay? Uh, Mars is not a problem, Venus is not a problem. Uh, so you can see a lot of the celestial bodies in our solar system with this telescope on a good night, um, but for the most part, your kids aren't going to see that. So maybe on a PTA night or something, they might have that opportunity, but realistically, you're going to be using this during the day, <coughs> outside, excuse me. Um, and so there's a lot of different uh, techniques to use it for stargazing that we're not going to get into in any real detail. Um, but uh, we'll get you set up and we'll get you the basics. So, so there we go. So here is the Celestron. Now, to start with, you basically get this huge box, and inside the box is a lot of small boxes. The thing you want to do before you uh, take out everything out, because you want to want to put everything back. Okay, and you want to put it back in the right spot, and you have it out for a couple weeks, uh, and you're going to put it back, and you're going to forget where everything is. So what you want to do is you want to then label the box with what's inside of it so that you can then put it back together. And you want to put all your boxes back in here and then close this up so that you can see how it fits back again. So we'll start off with this as a tripod. A lot of packaging in here. You can save it if you want, it's not necessary. Now this tripod is much more robust than the other one. Um, and it's got a, a knob on the bottom, it's going to attach to this part, this is called the head of your tripod, and it's going to securely lock it in place. Um, the tripod's pretty stable, I'm going to move this over real quick. point I've got a tripod but I don't have anything to attach to it. So I need the head. The head is a heavy square box and it looks super complicated. It's all bent up to be able to fit. Um, there's two ends. There's this end which has got some knobs on it uh, and a big silver piece. This is the part that's going to go on to the telescope. This part it's got a little it's, it sticks down and it's got a, a knob that turns this is going to go right here in the base. So once you just you know, slide it in, you can push up on this and turn. And as you do that, it's going to lock it. Alright, now, this is what happens. This is going to slide back and forth. Okay, there it is sliding back and forth. And I'm going to turn this and I'm going to turn it like that. So this is how it's going to sit. So, this is kind of at an angle, and my telescope is going to go up here. But it's going to start tipping over because there's no counterbalance. So the next thing I'm going to do is get out my counterbalance weights. And they, these very heavy, small half spheres. And then you get a big flat box. And then this flat box is a bunch of smaller pieces including a very nice chromed wand with a kind of bright orange tip in it. I'm going to slide these guys down. Now, make sure you tighten these just a little bit so that they don't slide. 
Otherwise, they can hurt, especially if they fall on your foot. Take this, and you're just going to screw it into this hole in the bottom here. So now I've got some counterweight. My whole tripod, my telescope's going to see up here. Um, now I've got some counterweight. So what I want to be able to do is I want the telescope to be able to move freely. Uh, so this is counterbalancing the, the effect of gravity. So now I need to get the telescope. So I've got a tripod ready. I've got the head mounted. It's stable. I've got a counterbalance on the uh, uh, to attach, and my telescope is going to go right. Here's my telescope. Essentially, a long tube. I've got a lens on this side, and I have a spot for a lens on this side, but there's no lens yet where I have to put it there. There's this orange um, uh, connection piece right here, okay, and it, 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 um, it kind of angles out a little bit, and it's going to slide. Onto this, okay. Now, even if I let go, it's still stable, but if I tilt this, it's going to slide out. So I need to use my two adjusters on the side of this. So they're right here. I'm adjusting this so that it doesn't slide out. Now, if I got this right, this should be able to kind of wobble pretty effortlessly. It shouldn't take a lot of work, and it shouldn't turn on its own and slowly start to sink. You want to be able to put it somewhere and have it stay. And if you've done it that way, it works pretty well. So for instance, if I, if it doesn't stay that way, I can slide it a little bit back and forth to help balance it out. But most of the time, put it kind of in the middle, pretty much will work, especially for what we're trying to do. Again, daytime dealing with the kids. So here's our telescope. Now, I can try to look through this, but it's basically a big empty hole. There's no lens on the end of that. I come back to my big flat container. On the inside, I'm going to get an elbow piece. There's a mirror in here. I'm going to slide it on the end. And there's a couple of small screws that are going to help attach it. So I have put the elbow piece right here. So, this is the elbow piece, and these are the tall, small screws that attach it. Now when I focus, you can see, if I use the focusing rod, how this is physically moving the lens assembly back and forth, and this is how we're going to get our focus correct. Still though, that's just a hole, there's no lens in there. You get two lenses. One is 20 millimeter, one is 10. And the weird thing is that, unlike with a camera, the 20 millimeter, which would seem to be bigger, actually gives you a smaller view. Uh, it's less magnified. So you, 20 is what you want to use to start with. Now, um, I'm pretty much set up. Now, if you try to use this inside the classroom, it will not work. You will not be able to see anything. Um, so you want to be able to go outside or look through a window to use this. What I've done in the past, I've taken a post-it note um, with a smiley face on it, for instance, and pasted it on a, a wall, you know, across from the courtyard, for instance. Um, I have used this in a larger room from corner to corner. It just barely made focus. And what I did is I drew a very small smiley face on the edge of my um, whiteboard, like, like up here. And by small, I mean it was small. It was a tiny thing. You probably can't even see that. They couldn't see it from where they were, but when I magnified it with the telescope, they could see it. Okay? Um, and you want to use a smiley face or something like that because they'll see that it's also upside down. Um, or actually, this one, they won't be upside down. Uh, the ref the uh, reflect ref refracting telescope uh, had it upside down. Reflecting telescope, I guess. So this is a refracting telescope. So the lens, the mirror in here is flipping the view for you. 
And the other types of telescopes, which are shorter, um, they use a mirror assembly to bounce light in round inside to give you a better view. Um, so I'm going to use the focusing knob here to kind of adjust where I am focused. Uh, I can turn this a little bit. Um, this, my lens is down. I take the lens cap off on the right side. Uh, I'm ready to go and be able to view things. Again, this is how you're going to be viewing um, most things um, like during the day, distant viewing with the kids. Uh, there is a spotter uh, on here as well that can kind of help you get in the ballpark. Uh, you won't need it. You can use it during the day to help you to kind of sight through it, and then you can look through here and say, oh yeah, I'm close to that, and measure it a little bit. There's a couple of things that can help you that are adjustments, for instance. There's an instruction manual as well that has close-up photos of most of these things. And the adjustment knobs, um, if you get your kids to put them on and use them, uh, they'll notice that this is making a very small adjustment. Uh, and if you're looking at stars, that would be perfectly appropriate, or planets, that would be perfectly appropriate. But in the, in the, when you're looking at just like, you know, a, a flagpole across the way or whatever, moving it with your fingers is perfectly fine too. Here's the biggest problem with the kids, is they move this a little bit, they nudge it, they, they bump into the telescope or the tripod, they're going to lose view and they're going to have to find it. And because uh, it's, the perspective is flipped here, they're going to want to go left when they should really be going right. Um, so it takes a while for, to get used to it. Uh, you, if you set it up somewhere so the kids can move through there in small groups and they can take a few minutes to do it, that's better. If you try to line up all your kids one after another to view it, um, make sure the other kids have something to do because this it takes a while to use it. Especially if the kid knocks it, then you have to go in and kind of re recenter it and then get them to do it. The best way to do it, if you're going to do that, make sure the kids walk up with their hands behind their back and they get to it. And they're going to put their eye right on there. And if what they see is a bunch of black, it means their eye is not lined up to the lens. If what they see is like, oh, I see part of it, they need to slide their eye over. So if they can't see anything, it's because their eye is not lined up to the hole. Uh, and you can change this. A stool helps, by the way, get the kids up high enough that they can kind of see. Now, like I said, label your boxes before you take things out. Put the boxes back into the main box so you can know where everything is and so you can see how it all fits back together. If I were you, I would build it, take it apart, build it again, take it apart. Do it two or three times the first time you do it so that you remember where these pieces go and what goes on with them. I have not talked at all about how to view stars with this or celestial bodies with it. That's an entirely different topic. Um, I'm happy to help you with that if you're going to be doing that later. Um, but for this, this is all you need to do to kind of be able to use it as a tool to say this is how magnification of telescopes work. All right, thanks so much.